Well, that will be starting very shortly. With, uh, Dr. Benjamin Bieber, and I'm a I'm board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation. Uh, that's a physiatrist, and I have a uh, I have a physical therapy group, a wonderful physical therapy group that works with me, uh, as well as a podiatrist. And my whole career has been has been trying to keep patients away from having orthopedic surgery by many different types of procedures and techniques. Excellent. And can you tell us a little bit about everything that you guys do at your clinic? Okay. Uh, in our in our clinic, we we perform we do uh, tradi traditional uh, treatment, which is you know physical therapy and uh, medication, uh, as well as various types of injections. So that's what we do. Also, we'll perform uh, gel injections on uh, patients with arthritis of the knee. Excellent. So you take a really um, more of an integrated approach at pain and um, orthopedics. And the great thing about that is seeing that you also work with a physical therapy group, you're bringing those two worlds together really nice, as well as the podiatry that you're bringing in. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you is what got you into regenerative medicine? Well, my, my whole career, uh, which has been over 30 years, uh, I've been trying to learn so much to keep patients away from invasive surgery and uh, performing physical therapy and, and all kinds of medication injection techniques. Uh, one, of, uh, one of my colleagues uh, was, uh, was, uh, was performing regenerative medicine procedures, uh, which is uh, platelet-rich plasma and stem cell procedures, as well as prolotherapy, and getting amazing results and keeping patients away keeping patients away from uh, surgery. And what's so great about uh, this regenerative medicine we're talking about, it has a very high success rate and it is tremendously safe. Excellent. So that's really good. And um, I know you've been in the regenerative realm for a little while, and you've mentioned before that you've been in part of multiple groups that have and have talked and taught at multiple locations. Can you give us a little bit of history about where you talk in the country and some of the education that you put out there? Sure, it'd be my pleasure. Uh, you know, when you when you perform a regenerative medicine procedure, we use ultrasound ultrasound to guide the needle to go exactly 100% where it's supposed to go to inject those stem cells. So uh, I was the course director at New York University School of Medicine with musculoskeletal ultrasound or orthopedic ultrasound where uh, it's for diagnosis, but I use it also. It's an ultra. I use it. It's an ultrasound guided injection. So when I give the injection, when I give the injection, you can you can 100% see that needle going 100% where it's supposed to go. Uh, I'm also an associate. I'm also an associate professor of the Amer American Academy of Stem Cell Physicians, where I've lectured many times. Uh, that's one thing. And also, I'm I'm one. I'm a clinical assistant professor. At the, NY, at the New York University uh, Grossman School of Medicine, where I teach many residents all kinds of injection techniques. Excellent, so it sounds like you've got a lot of education in this and you're also spreading that education to other physicians around the country. So congratulations. Thank you, thank you, Garrett. No problem. Um, and then as we go further in, we always talk about regenerative medicine. Regenerative medicine means a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but typically we're talking about prolotherapy, PRP, and stem cells. Can you tell us a little bit um, what's the difference between those three different types of regenerative medicine? Okay, prolotherapy uh, is a treatment as well as a technique, and you're really using sugar water, and what it's doing is it's, bring, uh, it's bringing growth factors to the area where it tightens up the ligaments and, de and decreases the pain. Uh, the, next, the, nec the next procedure is platelet-rich plasma. That's where we draw blood. We draw blood from the patient and we put it in a special type of centrifuge and get a high concentration of platelets. At that high concentration, uh, a lot of growth factors are secreted where it brings uh, stem cell from the blood into the area. It has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties, a lot of healing properties. And then after that, we do the, we, you know, we perform the ultrasound guided injection of the platelet-rich plasma. Stem cells 
I, I perform uh, stem cell procedures also where it's derived from the bone marrow and the bone marrow is inside, inside the bone. And we use the stem cells in combination with platelet rich plasma. Now, what the stem cells do is they help to regenerate that area, that, that tissue, that, that structure that is lacking uh, or is torn. It also has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties uh, as well as uh, a lot of anti-inflammatory properties and a lot of healing properties. And we use a platelet-rich plasma with the stem cells because it helps the stem cells to multiply. Excellent. So um, I'm not sure if you can answer this, but sometimes when I talk to regenerative medicine specialists, they talk about PRP being the basic, then, there, then there's PRP, and then there's stem cells. How powerful is one compared to, to the other? You know, that's a good question. And the stem cells are, to me, in my opinion, they're the, the most powerful. However, however, if you do perform platelet-rich plasma, usually I get, I definitely get a result, and I get patient, I get patients better where they're functioning, where they're functioning better, uh, as well as the pain is less. But the the best is is uh, the stem cell procedures. Excellent. Um, if you had to, do you think if someone was debating between, let's just say, PRP and prolotherapy? How many PR or prolotherapies would someone have to do to equal the power of a PRP, let's say? You know, it's usually, it's, it's usually, uh, you only need really, you really need to do with PRP. Uh, it depends on the area. Uh, usually for the spine, it's, it's one to two at the most. Uh, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a patient, uh, if it's a patient uh, uh, with a long, long term who've had this problem for a long time is anywhere from one to three but 90 percent of the time it's only one time where you perform the platelet-rich plasma injection now with the prolotherapy you have to do a minimum of two because you're tightening up those ligaments you're stabilizing that joint so it's anywhere from two to six that you need to do okay so that that helps see or show the power between PRP and prolotherapy, and then generally when it's stem cells, it's usually just one set of stem cells, correct? That's correct. Okay. So yeah, it's prolotherapy is, is nice. PRP is better than stem cell is pretty much the creme de la creme of what you do with there. Yes. But you know, with, with the stem cells, I always, I always perform a, another, at least one, uh, one platelet rich plasma injection four to six weeks later because it helps to continue to multiply the stem cells. Excellent. Sometimes I hear that referred to as the healing cascade and just continuing that, that paradigm. Yes. All right. So now we know that what PRP, prolotherapy, and stem cells are, what kind of conditions can this be used for in regenerative medicine? Okay. It's used for so many uh, in orthopedics. We, I use it for the spine, the neck, the middle back, the low back. And starting from the shoulder, uh, I use it for the shoulder for mainly two conditions, and that's a rotator cuff tear or arthritis of that shoulder. When we go down to the elbow, I use, I use regenerative medicine, mainly platelet-rich plasma for a tennis elbow or a golfer's elbow. And for the wrist, for the wrist it's either a, a tendon or arthritis, and the fingers, it's usually uh, it's usually for the joints. However, I also use it at the wrist for carpal tunnel syndrome, which is compression of the nerve in the wrist. Going down to the lower extremities, I also use it for the hip. If someone has arthritis of the hip, uh, I perform the I perform a regenerative medicine procedure. Also uh, for the knees, the knee is a big one where they uh, for arthritis of the knee, as well as someone someone who has a torn meniscus. For the ankle, I use it for the joints as well as uh, as well as the tendons and the ligaments. Uh, and for the and for the feet, uh, what's a, a real good one is where you have heel pain. It's also called plantar fasciitis, and the sensitivity for platelet-rich plasma is tremendously high. Okay, that's that's great. So it looks like you can do a whole lot for 
for the body, whether you're suffering from arthritis or degeneration, regenerative medicine can really take care of orthopedic needs, ligaments, tendons, um, tightening them up or loosening them depending on what's going on. Do you ever recommend regenerative medicine after somebody has had surgery? Yes, yes. Uh, and that's a good question. Uh, I would say if the patient had, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, I had a patient recently who, who had uh, severe low back pain going down, going down the legs, and she had two back surgeries, two back surgeries, and she was still in pain. The first surgery, she was a little better. The second one, she wasn't, she wasn't better at all. Uh, and I performed just a basic uh, four prolotherapy procedures on her, and she has minimal to no pain, no further pain, and that that was that was fantastic. And also, also you can perform uh, you can perform it on patients who've had definitely surgery, who's who've had su surgeries which which have uh, failed, which have failed or did not give them uh, enough relief. You you can definitely perform a a platelet-rich plasma or a stem cell procedure on a failed uh, orthopedic surgery. Okay, sounds great. Um, is there a point where regenerative medicine will not help people? Or is there a point when it's um, like, it, can a knee go too bad to where regenerative medicine would not be a good option? Well, it wouldn't be a, a good option uh, if someone is the word immunocompromised, I mean, just meaning where if someone, let's say, had a cancer with spread, with spread, uh, it's, it's not indicated. Uh, if someone, if someone has an active infection, we, we, we hold off since it's an elective procedure. And if someone is on a blood thinner like, uh, Coumad like Coumadin, uh, we just stop the Coumadin for three days before, and then we perform the uh, regenerative medicine procedure. Okay. Um, and then, so if someone does decide to go through regenerative medicine, one of the things that we know with surgery is sometimes like a knee surgery, you're laid up for anywhere from a few weeks to a few months, depending on how the surgery has gone. With regenerative medicine, what is the typical recovery time? Uh, I think that's great. Compared to surgery, it's a very short downtime, which is fantastic. Uh, usually, depending on the procedure, depending on the procedure I do, two or three days, I, I, I like them to rest that extremity. Uh, so let's say if it's the knee, that they should be, they should have no weight on, uh, or as minimal as possible on that, on that leg that, that had the procedure two to three days at the most. But then after, th then after two to three days, the patients can start walking and progress, walking and progress their activities. So I would say just two to three days of, of keeping tr as much weight as possible uh, off that extremity that has been, that has been uh, where the procedure has been performed. Okay. Um, and then when we really start to look at the end game of this, when do uh, regenerative candidates see the maximum results? Uh, with maximum results, I can tell you, uh, I've had patients at anywhere from anywhere from two weeks to three months. Uh, but most patients feel much better in three to four weeks. You know, I've had patients before two weeks, they feel much better. And then I had one patient with severe arthritis of the ankle, severe, and all of a sudden at the fourth month, they felt much better. So once you do the regenerative medicine procedure, you got to give it time. Uh, but in general, it's three to four weeks where most of the patients are feeling much better. Excellent. Um, and then... You've been doing this for a little while now, or for a long while, actually. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of your patients that have had some success in different areas of regenerative medicine? Okay. Well, I've been uh, I've been uh, working with regenerative medicine for the last eight to ten years, and there are many, many patients. Uh, since I've been doing it for eight to ten years, there are many, many patients who are doing great. But I can just remember the you know the, the most the, mo the most recent patients. Uh, one is a is a uh, is a patient, uh, seventy two years old female, and she had severe arthritis of the knee, severe arthritis of the knee, and back pain that has been unsuccessful with the traditional approaches like physical therapy and all kinds of injections, 
and she had pain going down the legs. So on the low back, uh, on the low back, uh, I performed platelet-rich plasma, uh, but in the knee, uh, I, I performed a stem, a, a stem cell procedure with platelet-rich plasma, and then a month later, uh, I gave the patient another platelet-rich plasma injection. But before I did the second procedure of the platelet-rich plasma, she was practically 100% better. Her knee was all better, her back was all better. She is so happy. And a matter of fact, uh, I have the video of this, of this beautiful, nice patient who's so happy, so grateful. And if you, if you would like to see the video, uh, contact, I guess you can connect with uh, Garrett and he would, he would uh, make sure that you'd be able to get, see that video. Okay, yeah, absolutely. We have those. Oh, I, yep, thank you. And I have one other patient. I, I, this, it's that same patient. It's the patient who's had the low back pain going down, going down the legs. And uh, she's had the failed surgeries two times. And I performed basic prolotherapy four times. And she's practically completely normal, hardly any pain at all, functioning beautifully. And if you want to see a video of this uh, of this patient, also uh, Garrett has access to that. Excellent. Yes, I've got those in some of our e emails as well as on our website and social media. So if anybody would like that, please feel free to reach out, and we will help get that on over to you. So. It's great to hear that you've seen a lot of success with your patients um, and the knowledge that you have with all of this. Now, if someone is interested in regenerative medicine, how would they get started with you? Well, they can call, they can call my office, which is, uh, the office number is 718 area code 8350100. And they can also uh, go to my website. And on my website, you can do you can uh, do the e you can give us your e you can give us your email, as well as uh, as well as phone number, and our office will contact you. Excellent. And then, when so, if they reach out to you and decide to go through with a consultation or an exam, what does that typically look like, and how does that work? Okay. Well, if the patient is close enough. You know, if the patient can, a face-to-face -face consultation uh, would be the best. And the patient comes in and has a full history, has a physical examination, and if they have any, if they have any MRIs or CAT scans, I, I have them give them to me. And then what I usually do is, if they haven't had X-rays or MRIs, I order them. And uh, I also ask them, you know, what what kind of treatment have you had before? Because maybe maybe patients haven't tried physical therapy. Maybe patients haven't tried different medications. Uh, maybe patients didn't try some of the traditional uh, injections first. So I like uh, I like patients a lot of the time to try the you know the traditional approaches. Number one, because a lot of times they work, uh, and it's covered by the insurance. And I, I usually, most of the time I see patients where, you know, the, the, their problem has been terribly severe or they've, they've tried all these traditional approaches and others who just don't want to have surgery, uh, invasive surgery. So if you don't want any invasive, if you don't want to have any invasive surgery, uh, you try one of the regenerative medicine procedures, uh, you know, pleurotherapy, platelet-rich plasma, stem cell therapy because the success rate is very high and it's tremendously safe. Excellent. Um, so as we keep talking about these and you've got multiple different options that people can go down through the route of whether it's insurance-based or non-insurance-based, uh, we do want to address the question of um, that regenerative medicine right now is not covered by insurance for multiple different reasons. A lot of it is because not enough physicians out there do it yet. Um, but the realm of regenerative medicine is very well established. There's lots of evidence about it, lots of studies out there that we can share through um, emails and some of our social media stuff out there, making sure that we know that this is a safe and ethical practice. And Dr. Beeper has been doing it for over 12 years, I believe. Uh, well, 10 years. That's close. That's close. <laughs> so over, over 
for 10 years. So we do want to just kind of open up the floor for any questions that anybody might have. If you do have any, please feel free to put them in the question and answer or just type them in the chat and I would be happy to address those. And as people are working to type some of those in, we'll just continue to talk a little bit about what you do. And one of the things I want to ask you is what makes you different than some of the other regenerative medicine facilities around? Well, when I do when I do the procedure, let's say it's a let's say it's arthritis of the knee. I use a also a prolotherapy technique with the stem cells and the platelet rich plasma where I'm not only injecting the specific area, I'm injecting all the ligaments around that joint. So, so, the, so the knee, let's say the, the knee is much more, or the joint or any of the joints are much more stable. So uh, it's, it's not only that joint, it's all this, you know, also the tendons and the ligaments. So it really stabilizes that joint and, uh, and, they, feel, and they feel much better. So it's, a, it's adding this prolotherapy technique uh, when I perform my my stem cell procedures and my platelet rich and, and the platelet and the platelet rich plasma, because again it it helps it helps the structure where uh, that that's been harmed, but it also hits all the areas around that joint to give that joint a lot of stability. Uh, that's one thing, and also uh, I ran a course uh, I would say three four years ago, where I was a course director at, at New York University where I ran a national, a national conference, even someone came in from Holland, all about uh, ultrasound and ultrasound guided injection. Again, where, where ultrasound is used so you can see the needle inside to go exactly where it's supposed to go. And it's also used for diagnosis. So I was a course director uh, of, that, of that conference, uh, which was a, a successful conference and, and uh, very good. Uh, what I also wanted to bring up, I'm the associate, uh, I'm, I'm an associate professor uh, of the American Academy of Stem Cell Physicians. Also, I'm a clinical assess, excuse me, a clinical assistant professor at the New York University School of Me Medicine, where I teach the residents all kinds of injection techniques. Excellent. So very experienced. So when I look at you and your clinic, a couple of things that sets you apart is the level of knowledge that you have is just outstanding, and especially in the regenerative medicine world. Um, your experience and the part of the groups that invite you to be part of their um, teaching programs and educational curriculum. But the one thing I really want to point out to everybody is that a lot of it is based on that prolotherapy technique that you mentioned, that you're hitting the other structures. So. What I've noticed is the difference between a lot of regenerative clinics are, are they hitting at the point of pain or are they hitting at the point of pain and around those structures? Because we know if the knee's been damaged, we know typically if it's been damaged and they're going through chronic pain for a while, some of those ligaments and tendons around that area have been hurt, have been stretched and a lot of things. So all that stress that's happening on that joint is really breaking down that whole structure. So to kind of put it into a, a similar term, if our walls also had a water leak and you look in there and you're just like, okay, I, I need to replace that one two by four in my wall and then I'm all done. But really with the technique that you do, you go in and you say, yes, that one, one two by four in the wall is rotten, but most likely if that's rotten, then we need to check the two by fours on each side of the wall and really address that whole area and not the, just that one piece. So I think that's really important for people to think about when they wanna look at who they wanna do regenerative medicine with is, are they using a prolotherapy technique or are they just doing a point of care technique? Um, and with you doing more of that prolotherapy and addressing those other areas, I think that really sets you apart from everybody else and also making sure that you use that ultrasound guided injections that you do is very important because you're getting very precise injections versus some people that are doing palpation and blind injections. So I wanna congratulate you on that and how you're really separating yourself apart from everybody else. The next question I had was, someone's asking about a rotator cuff tear and how you would address that. 
You know, that's that's a that's a that's a great question, and uh, it is it is very good for a regenerative medicine procedure. Uh, is is very good for rotated cuff tears, but usually partial rotated cuff tears. If someone, there can be also good for full thickness rotated cuff tear, but if the tendons if the tendons are very separated from each other, where a full thickness tear, the success rate isn't good. But if it is a full thickness tear and the ends of the tendon are close to each other, then there's a possibility that a regenerative medicine procedure uh, will work. But it's excellent for it's excellent for a partial rotator cuff tear. Excellent. Um, the next one was how com common is tennis elbow, and is this something that can be helped with regenerative medicine? You know that that's another good question. And in regenerative medicine, that was one of the first uh, of, of the, all the articles. Tennis elbow was the one that was discussed, and how how well platelet-rich plasma uh, helps tennis elbow. So platelet-rich plasma is is amazing for is amazing for uh, is amazing for uh, tennis elbow or golfer's elbow, which is uh, which affects the tendon as it inserts into the bone. So platelet-rich plasma is excellent for golfer's elbow is el and excellent for tennis elbow. Excellent. Um, right now, that's all the questions that that I have coming up. Um, Dr. Bieber, is there anything else you'd like to tell people? Mm, I would just say uh, what Garrett had to say, you know, if those, if those ligaments are loose and you don't, and you don't uh, do the prolotherapy technique, just a loose, a loose ligament by itself can, can cause or emanate and cause pain. So it's important to hit, it's important to hit the, the target, which is, you know, say the joint, but you have to hit those loose ligaments because the ligaments, if you do that, the tightening up the ligaments will decrease pain, but it'll also increase stability. Uh, just what Garrett had to say. Excellent. Well, Dr. Bieber, thanks a lot for um, coming out and helping everybody learn a little bit more about regenerative medicine. If people want more information, how would they get a hold of you? I would say dial uh, dial seven one eight. Eight three five zero one hundred, uh, which is our office, uh, or you can go on. You can go on the website uh, and uh, give us your email and phone number, and uh, someone in the office will be getting. We'll get back to you. All right. Well, thanks a lot, and hopefully next time we do this, we'll have some more items to talk about, and then we'll go from there. So have a great night, everybody, and thank you a lot for uh, Dr. Bieber for joining us and talking to us all. You know, thank you very much, Garrett, and thank you for all the listeners. Because the more you tell, the more you tell uh, to people about this, the the better chance that they, they don't they can avoid they can avoid invasive invasive surgery with complications, and they can have a regenerative medicine procedure that has a high success rate, uh, very very safe, and 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 has a very short recovery period. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night.